Hi folks, I'm Peggy Tucker and I'm a certified master sugar artist and I absolutely love to play with isomalt. And my favorite of course is cake play isomalt. And so today we're going to be doing beer bottles because they seem to be all of the rage. Whether it's um, a beer bottle, a champagne bottle, a wine bottle, everybody's making them because they go in so many different cakes um, for a lot of different occasions as well. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that pour. And so today, I have chosen Cake Play's New Copper, and to that I've added just a little bit of the clear because I wanted it to have a, a little lesser of um, the dense color. So this is a beer bottle mold. It's two parts. Goes together like this. You'll note also that I have gloves on, and I normally don't work with gloves because I'm really, really bad about it, but if you're working with hot isomalt, it is extremely important that you protect your hands and wear gloves. But i am got them on because I'm going to be rolling this mold and I don't want any chance of it getting on my hands. So it's a two part, but there's no way to really secure it. So we use heavy rubber bands, which is the very best. Just kind of make sure you've got it nice and secure on there. I've heated my isomalt until it is a really nice kind of a water consistency. You don't want it too thick. There we go. All right, hard part once again, drum roll. And we're doing a pour. Straight down the little hole into the bottle. It's going to take the entire cup that I have here. All the way in it goes. Don't cheat it. Last drop. We're good to go. So I'm going to let that set just for a couple of seconds so that the bottom can kind of just level out with the bubbles since I poured. And then I'm going to slowly begin to just rotate it. You can see I have it on a little bit of an angle. I like to do it this way because I don't like to have to do a double pour like some people do. I'm not really sure about it, but it just kind of, if you don't have the isomalt cooked to the right temp again, then it's going to either um, melt into your bottle or it's going to be too cold. So if you just do a full cup to start with and roll slowly, it'll work for you. Now I've brought my cup back over. I'm going to continue to roll nice and slow until I can actually see down inside here. You can see the ice malt come to the very edge. And that's what I'm looking for. There it is there. And I'm just going to roll it to make sure it's all across that edge down there. Nice and easy. And at this point, I'm not going to dump that excess out. I'm going to set it down and I'm going to do this with my mold. Nice and slow. And it's just coating that inside over and over. Tilt it a little to get it back to that cap. And that's all there is. You just have to like, you know, just keep moving it. it takes just a little bit of time. But now you can see why I have gloves on. If a little of that were to slip out, I'd be grateful I had my gloves. You just pull the glove off. That's why they're there, they're protection. All right, I'm rolling it back upwards now. Gonna roll it back down, bring my cup back over, and I'm going to begin to roll it as I begin to pour it out. And if done right, you shouldn't have but just a little bit coming back out. And then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to rest it right on my cup and it's going to set there, and it's going to do its draining, and it's drying. Now, how do we know when it's dry? You can take your wrist right to the, to the mold. If it still has heat, you know that isn't finished yet. So just let it go. It takes probably between maybe 25 minutes to get it completely cooled so you can take it out without any trouble whatsoever. So that's all there is to making a beer bottle. I'm going to open it up in just a minute. All right, folks, my bottle is cool enough now. I can touch it, use your wrist on it. It should be nice and cool. And then you can actually see where it's now dripped into back into it. And remember how much I started with? I have very little back out from it. So I'm gonna set that aside. Then you're going to remove the rubber bands carefully. You don't want to risk cracking it. But I can tell you this, I've actually dropped these with a bottle in it. Worked perfectly fine. There's a lot of great silicone around it protecting it. Coming up across the top, I want to come up over those little areas. 
and kick them off. So I'm going to set it down and I don't want to just grab this and pull it off. I want to kind of just baby it a little bit. Just give it a little loving all the way up. All right, until you can feel it finally release and then you can just pull up. And there's our bottle. And then you're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Just pull it to the sides and lift it up. So that's your finished bottle. Well, no, it's not quite finished yet. We don't want that on the bottom. So I'm going to take care of it by setting my bottle down inside my mold. I'm going to take my spatula and I'm just going to go right in here and just lightly tap. Lightly tap. There you go. It'll take that right off. If there's a little sharp edge, you can actually just take your torch, angle it to the side coming away from it because we don't want to hit the bottle with it. So you can take that right on off. There you go. Nice little bottle. You can also, I like to do this, I don't know how many other people know about it, but you can also take a little nail file and come on in and shave all of those nicely off. Lightly hit it with your torch and you are never going to see those seams. So that's as easy as it is to make a beer bottle. Um, I actually made one and tested to see how long will it hold a real beer. And of course, I use Coors Light. And we needed that because I was doing um, a little thing with um, Susan Carberry, and at the end, we were going to be using it. And so I made a bottle, trimmed the top off of it, took and put a little pad on the bottom of isomalt, heated it, so it was a full bottle that would hold liquid, and tested it. 15 minutes and nine seconds before you could start to see it going away into the bottle and you were still able to pick it up. So I just thought that was the coolest thing and we loved doing it and the audience that was in front of us when we really did it was over the top. So that's our bottle and you can also come back and put labels onto it, paint your caps because of course you know that you can paint cake play ice all. You can also airbrush it and so then you can simply take your bottles and lay them down inside your ice in your bucket, all right, like so. If this were a beer bucket, you could do that. Think of it as being a beach theme as well. So if your cake was here, you could put sand and stuff on the bottom, take and slice the bottle in half or only make half a bottle and have it laying down there. Some seashells around it that are done out of cake play as well. Just use your imagination. It's endless. And I always say, just have fun with it.